Do you have a moment? Because I want to ask you a really quick question. You ready for this? What is the best acoustic guitar that you've ever owned in your entire life? Better yet, what is the best acoustic guitar that you've ever played in your entire life? You see, like a lot of large scale questions, I'd be willing to bet a very large sum of money that if we asked that question to a million people, we'd probably get a million different answers. But I would also be willing to bet an even larger sum of money that of those million answers, most of them would be from two main brands. And I think you can probably guess which ones those are. You see, if you would have asked me that question probably 10 years ago, I would have given you a very definitive answer. Of course it's Martin. I mean, that's just what made sense to me, right? And the reason for that is because I had my college roommate at the time, and every single day he would teach me these new guitar chords. I was just learning all this new stuff, trying to comprehend all this new information. And every single day at 3 p.m., we would get a knock on the door, and one of his friends would schmooze on over, and he was also a guitar player who I really, really respected at the time. And he would be teaching us all these new chords, all these new licks, all this stuff that I had never even heard or thought of before in the realm of music. And he was slinging an O.M. Martin. So I thought to myself, this cool guy plays guitar. He plays a Martin. I must be a Martin guy. And of course, it's also what Mayer played. And I mean, are you even a real Mayer fan unless you do everything he does exactly the same way that he does it? I was a Martin guy. I thought that was gonna be the way it was just gonna be forever. Mike the Martin guy. But then something interesting happened. Something that always happened, life happens. And as life happened, I ended up getting a new college roommate. And this new college roommate, he was a musical genius. I'm talking, he had more talent in his pinky finger than I had in my entire body when it came to music. He was a multi-instrumentalist, he could play anything, but his main instrument, his weapon of choice, the acoustic guitar. I mean, how else are you gonna serenade girls, am I right? I still had my beginner acoustic guitars at the time, and I knew rooming with him was gonna be really cool because we were gonna get to split all of our instruments, and I knew he had a way more expensive acoustic than me. But then I get to the room, I open up this case, and I see a tailor, and I'm like, Whoa, 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 bro, what's happening here? I thought we were all cool. I thought everyone wanted to be a Martin guy. But in the midst of all of my doubt, I decide, just for a second, let me give this guitar a try. And so I strum this Taylor 214 CE that his parents had gotten him for his 18th birthday. And immediately I notice, wow, this thing is unbelievable. And not only that, but I start to play this thing every day and I develop sort of a sentimental connection with this guitar as well as liking it because I'm just a new guitar player and I'm learning hundreds of new riffs on this exact guitar. And finally, after months, I think to myself, I may not be that Martin cat anymore. I think it's time to tell the world I am a Taylor fan. I'm a Taylor guitar player. I mean, why wouldn't you be? These are the greatest sounding guitars of all time. And despite that great epiphany, the world did not stop. Time kept moving. And as I graduated college, it was time for me to think about the big questions in life, like what acoustic guitar am I gonna get once I have just a little bit of money saved up? So after working in a guitar store, I bought a guitar, I sold a guitar, and I was ready. I was ready to get that Taylor. And I ended up finding something super special. On Craigslist, a deal for a Taylor 214 that was even better than the one my roommate had had because it was from like, 10 years prior to that, when all of the Taylor 214s had been all solid wood. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm gonna be a guitar player with an all solid wood Taylor. I mean, that's literally the dream. So I buy this guitar, I start playing it for about a year, and I think you can pretty much guess where the story goes from here. I sound another person with a Martin, I wanted a Martin, then I wanted a Taylor again, then I wanted a Martin, then a Taylor, then a Martin, then a Taylor, and it just kept going back and forth over and over and over again. I would sell guitars and buy guitars and sell guitars and buy guitars. The cycle was unending because I was never willing to ask myself the real big question once and for all. Once and for all. Once and for all. Which one is better, Martin or Taylor? And I was thinking about it yesterday. I'm older. I'm wiser. I've gained at least like three and a half pounds of muscle. So why not ask the question right now? So let's do it. First things first, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to need some guitars if we're going to ask this big question. So I want to introduce you to a couple of our players. Coming in all the way from Nazareth, Pennsylvania in 1833, weighing in at just over four and a half pounds, responsible for some of the most iconic acoustic guitar tones of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, may I properly introduce you to the Martin SCE 13 Special.
And our challenger for the evening, ladies and gentlemen, is no slouch, no slouch at all. Established in 1977, weighing just under five pounds, all solid wood. Let me introduce you to the Taylor 314C. You see, both of these guitars, ladies and gentlemen, were picked very intentionally. Both of them happen to have cutaways, they both have solid spruce tops, but I also like that they were both in the same price range. The Taylor coming in at just about $2,200 and the Martin coming in at $2,000. But the real reason, Taylors are often, in my experience, known for having a really great top end. And a lot of Martins are known for having that very antique thing, which is great, but they're very different. But specifically with this Martin, you can definitely tell it was made with a more modern feel and modern sound in mind. You don't really see a lot of Martins with a cutaway or with that kind of sound in mind other than the GPC. So I thought this would be a great competitor. All right, so we have these challengers, we have our guitars. Why don't we just start going? Well, it's not quite that simple. You see, in doing this experiment, I wanna get it as accurate as possible, which means I wanna eliminate as many unnecessary variables as possible, which in layman's terms, even if you picked up two of the same acoustic guitar, depending on the way it's strung up, depending on how you're feeling, what pick you're using, those two guitars can sound completely different and feel completely different. So like I was saying, we have to eliminate as much of that as possible. So first thing, we have to make sure they have the same strings. So that took about 20 minutes longer than I thought and the sun actually went down. So we're actually 24 hours in the future right now. I let them sit, let them stretch a little bit overnight. And now there's one more thing, just one more thing before we plug in and actually start seeing these sounds. We're gonna need a mic. And unfortunately, this mic will not suffice right now. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Mojave MA300. It's a large diaphragm tube mic, making it perfect for acoustic guitars and perfect for the experiment we're about to do. We usually need our 48 volts of phantom power, but with this being a tube mic, it actually comes with its own power supply. So we'll be using this, we'll be going through the Neve. I think it might be time to see what's up. And yes, I will be taking wagers in the comments if you wanna start up any bets or anything like that. So that was cool. They both sound great. The mic sounds great. I think I'm starting to know which one I prefer, but I want to see them in the context of a mix first. Okay, so that was a crap ton of fun, and it was really cool seeing the differences between the different sounds, but I'm not gonna front here, I'm not gonna lie to you, there was a definitive winner. And I think a lot of people would be scared to say that there's a winner, like what's gonna happen is like Martin or Taylor or one of the companies gonna come for me. <laughs> <laughs> you think this is some kind of joke? For obvious reasons, I can't disclose my true identity nor the identity of my employer. But what I can tell you is that you have compromised the security of the entire guitar world. No, no, I don't, I don't know anything. I, I, don't, I don't know too much. We can stop this. Unfortunately, Michael, it's too late for you. You've crossed a line that others wouldn't dare to. What line? No, 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 no! Wait, wait, what? Wait, wait what happened? Oh. Yeah. <sighs>
Well, that was quite the interesting day. I don't think I expected any of that. If you want to know anything more about the Mojave MA300, I got it from the homies at Sweetwater. The links are in the description. Make sure to check it out. It's one of the best ways to support the channel if that's something you want to do. I'm telling you, before this all went down, I, I remembered what my answer was. I remember which was better, Martin or Taylor. But now, due to the trauma, I can't even, I can't even recall what I was going to say. Like and subscribe if you had a good time. And most importantly, like most important of all, help me, help me.